I am Steve Rogers. This is the best I could do, okay? Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing a Captain America build. We're on a regular strength build, using the dry leaf arts as main weapon. You can use them heavy or blood here, but heavy will give you more damage for the Ash of War. You can also run a dexterity build, but the damage difference will not be noticeable. The Smith script shield, of course, will be using the Ash of War to throw it at enemies. Most people don't expect how fast it comes out, so it actually was very useful to chip enemies down. You can also equip a parrying shield on the next slot and try to sneakily switch it while moving around to try and get an unexpected parry. The armor I use for this cosplay is the Commoner's Headband, Old Seeker's Knight Armor and Greaves, and the Mesmer's Gauntlet. I know it's not exactly like Cap, but it still looks quite fancy. For amulets we have multiple choices, but mainly I'm using the Smithing Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Crimson Medallion and Erdtree's Favor. This setup is better for the damage of the shield throw. If you want to focus more on the Palm Blast Ash of War, you can switch the Smithing Talisman for the Godfrey's icon for more damage. In your flask, use Crimson Bubble tier and any other tier of your choice. Okay, let's take a look at the strategy, strengths and weaknesses of this build in some invasions. So the best strategy that I have come up with this setup is making them chase you with the disc throw. So Typically when you use ranged attacks at people, they tend to chase you. Uh, that's the opportunity that we're going to take advantage of to use the Palm Blast and maybe get a hit in. In this case, they're prepared for it. Uh, they roll it well, but I keep just chipping uh, with the shield throw and eventually just try to make some space. I do not heal, just to make sure that they keep chasing me, and the strategy here is to use a wall or a corner to hide that you're charging the Palm Blast. So in this case I do exactly that, and it gets me a nice double hit here. After that the regular moves of the Dry Leaf uh, martial arts are very fast, so it's very good for finishing kills. The Palm Blast Sash of War is also very good for tanking hits when you're charging it. So what you can do is charge it when you know that the enemy is going to attack into you. You just poise it and then release it even if it's not a fully charge. You just release it when you know it's gonna hit like this here and you're still going to get a lot of damage from it. In this case, I'm up against a melee character and a ranged character, so uh, I start off by just chipping damage with the discus, as usual, trying to get at least the me melee one to chase me. Um, the other one is quite annoying though, so I just try to focus him as well as I can, but uh, it's not working. I just go for the backstab. It does not do a lot of damage, the critical hits with this weapon, uh, since it has very low base damage. Uh, the damage actually comes from the multi-hit, so... I get a, a little bit of damage here, but they are actually chipping me down quite effectively with the ranged attacks. When enemies are spamming ranged attacks at you like this, the best strategy is just to run away for a bit, uh, take cover and just try to lure them to you in some way. In this case what I do is I just switch to a region setup with the uh, FP region talisman and the bestial regeneration spell. Usually when summons here the sound effect that you're actually regenerating 
that may bait them into coming to you since they don't want you to just heal for free. It does take them a while to come to me. When they do, I just switch quickly to the regular talismans. And here you'll see I can charge a palm strike behind the wall and it actually still hits. So you can use that to your advantage whenever you see the opportunity. Um, the ranged guy is still very annoying, so I try to take cover once again. Because I'm low in HP, the melee guy is baited into chasing me. Here you see I can even trade with a greatsword and still not get points broken, which actually is effective for me to get the kill on the host. A very good strength of this setup is the fact that the discus hurl goes out so fast. So you can use it to either punish Estus flasks or spell casting. In this case, I just found the summon with very low HP, so I just quickly dispose of him. The tracking on the discus hole is actually very good. You see there that it went uh, very high and then just chased after the host and still hit him at a very long distance away from me. In this case, uh, I just go for a guard counter. And when he tries to heal, I just spam him with discus hurls. It even interrupts the Estus animation and it ends up getting me the kill. A definite weakness of this setup is the fact that you don't have that much poise damage, besides the palm blast. So in this case I'm up against a bull god with a shield. Uh, I know I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be able to kill him, even with a repose tier. I don't deal that much damage to him, uh, so I just try to focus the host, who, which doesn't have that much armor. So you can see that each discus hurl that hits him actually nets quite a bit of damage on his health bar. The bull god is just trying to apply pressure on me. If I hit him, he would just poise through it because my weapons do not deal that much poise. So I don't want to trade against that, I just go over him and focus the host directly and the running attack which comes very fast actually gets me a kill. Another weakness of this build is the fact that the armor set that I'm using doesn't have that much resistance and poise. You'll see why that is relevant later. I finally found the host. I go after him, but when I jump into the tunnel with him, I am greeted with another, another phantom. So here I just get blendered. If I had a great sword in this case, I could trade with them easily, uh, with just the regular poise of my armor set, if I had a heavier armor set. But in this case, I just have to roll as best as I can and get some distance. Try to roll the moonbell as well. And when I get into the corner here, I just try to charge the Palm Blast in case that they chase me. Uh, but they do not. That would probably one hit the Wizard if it hit though. When I chase back after them, I always try to check the corners in case that the summon is waiting for me there or even if there is another summon that I'm not aware of. The plan is going to be the same as before. Try to chip them away with the Disco Swirl and hopefully lure them into getting closer. Uh, but this time I'll try to be prepared and charge a Palm Blast uh, to hopefully one shot the, either the wizard or the phantom that is very low here. In this case, the phantom uh, just gets hit a, a lot of times with the discus roll. He probably didn't know the timing of the roll yet. Now it's just the host. So here is just try to roll the Moonlight Greatsword uh, whenever he charges that, that attack is very slow. Uh, he gets destroyed by the discus here. You can see how that is still very useful against spellcasters and ranged attacks in general. In this case, he just tries to trade with me and I just go for the kill with a, with a running attack. Here I am up against two wizards, so I try to chip them away with the discus hurl, it actually does a lot of damage and I'm trying out the dry leaf whirlwind here which can deal a lot of damage if you hit it completely with the downside that you can no longer poise attacks with the palm blast. You will see later why having no poise with this armor set or even the attacks of my weapons 
is going to be an issue, even against these two wizards that do not have weapons that deal that much poise damage. After a while I just chase after them when they're hiding behind this wall. I was hoping the NPCs would help me a little bit more, and they do, but uh, I still get blendered there because of not having any poise, I can't just trade with them. After a while I managed to lure them into this hallway so they get destroyed by the ranged spells of these NPCs. So when I see that they're very low I go in and I didn't realize that I was out of FP. You can see how the discus is not uh, getting thrown properly. But still even without FP the Ash of War is enough to get the kill on this wizard. But you can see it was a real hard fight and I had a lot of help from the NPCs. And that's about it. Thanks for watching until the end. Here is the summary of the build and if you liked the video, please subscribe for more and comment down below which build would you like to see next time.